So we're here at the Arm TechCon. And who are you? Hello, my name is Guy Lunardi. I work for Collabora. So Guy Lunardi? Yes. Uh, marketing? Uh, let's say that, yes. Yeah, so what is Collabora? Collabora is an open source consulting company. We basically sell services to our customers that wish to adopt open source components in their product solutions and we deliver that to them. So what kind of solutions are you doing? We specialize in a few different technology areas. We actually work around multimedia in particular. We do a lot of work on graphics as well. So we've yeah. had customers from very many industries that have asked us to help them with technologies like XOR, the Wayland new protocol for graphics environment in open source. We've done a lot of middleware work, in particular in the multimedia space. So we've been working with GStreamer for many years now to enable our customers to have uh, hardware accelerated codecs, very powerful pipelines and complex use cases, support for subtitles, support for technologies like multiple audio channels, uh, DRM as well is an environment in which we've helped our customers also. All of that using open source software, completely royalty free, non-burden of product licensing or anything like that. So uh, aerospace? Yes, we've, we've done a lot of work for in-flight entertainment as well as technology environments. Um, some of our biggest uh, segments right now is the automotive space. Uh, organizations like the Linux Foundation or the Genevi Alliance have been working with us to enable open source to become a real new force in those markets that were really struggling with proprietary software environments until recently. So you're part of uh, this and, and that? Yeah, so we work on the Linux, we work with the Linux Foundation, we work on Android together with Google, we've done graphical optimizations for customers all around the world, and we have a quick demonstration over here that I can show you that leverages a lot of those technologies. This is a pure demonstrator that we created for the automotive industry. It simulates a head unit, we have a clock, we have a media player over here. It's connected to a bunch of different devices. This is one of them, where when I click over here, I can browse the content from this uh, cell phone directly in my head unit and navigate all that. I also have access to local content, pictures, sound, media, and video. The cool thing about the video player over here, if I start this video right here, you'll actually get the playback working over here. But if we switch over and look to that screen over there on the right, you'll see that the video playback is synchronized frame perfect between these two interfaces. Oh, how does that work? So it's using a local network inside the car, either using Ethernet or other technologies. It also works over Wi-Fi to basically send the video stream over multiple devices. So you, you would have uh, client devices, headrest in the back of the seats, you have the center head unit console, and we have the ability to share content across multiple devices using standard like DLNA and other different broadcasting technologies, RTSP and many others. Again, all of that using open source software. And the playback is synced? The playback is synced. We're using our own clocking technology similar to what the AVP industry is doing and we enable all those functionalities directly from our edge unit computer system that either has the content locally or leverages it across Wi-Fi using DLNA interfaces and then sends that information to multiple screens inside the vehicle or inside of the in-flight entertainment system or the likes. So when I take the airplane and there's a movie system, you made it? So we've worked with some of our partners for in-flight entertainments, in particular retrofitting some of the older technologies that may have a tactile system but we're still using analog video playback. We have the ability to make all those systems work with our environment by either combining uh, edge unit technologies and multi-screen systems very similar to a thin client type environment where the human to machine interface is just the touch screen and then everything else is done remotely and we just send the remote frame back to the system or where we have multiple clients where all the clients are locally on that seat and then you have sort of your own computing unit and you can do on-demand playback, trick play and all those functionalities as well. Most of that is Linux? All of that is Linux. Everything we do... Every airplane is Linux? Oh no, not every airplane. Everything that we provide to our yeah. customers. Um, however, with that, with in-flight entertainment, a lot of the industry is now moving to open source and leveraging Linux-based systems. Uh, Most of it? So, a lot of them. Uh, Delta Airlines is using a technology that leverages a Red Hat environment. Um, very old, but it's working reliably and fairly well for them. Many other airlines have contracted with partners to actually use solutions that leverage open source extensively uh, to produce their IFE system. You cannot say which airline you work for, right? We can't, unfortunately. But uh, many uh, of the ones you're likely to have traveled with. Uh, China Airlines. Oh, I'm joking. Uh, how about... Uh, <laughs> How many, how many employees at Collabora? That's a good question. So we're uh, just about 100 people uh, shy of that. We have a headquarter in Cambridge, England. We also have a company uh, in Montreal, Canada. 
and we're present in about 28 countries, so we're very distributed. We find big talents, people that are very versed in the open source community, and we work with them uh, using their talent, and we don't require them to relocate. So we have people in Chile, Peru, Argentina, Brussels, Belgium, uh, Italy, Spain, uh, Korea, and many other countries. Big talents. Yes, yes. And you work with Lunaro. We've been working with Linaro for some time. We work with ARM architectures, evidently. A lot of our customers are the same conductor vendors themselves directly. Another one you may be interested to learn about is the Raspberry Pi Foundation, who is a customer, um, maybe partially because we're both based in Cambridge, England, but also because our technologies lend themselves very well to work with them. So a lot of the well-end graphics enablement that was done on the Raspberry Pi was done by our graphics engineer working directly with the Raspberry Pi Foundation and we're very pleased of that relationship and working directly with them. So is most of your work ARM Linux? A lot of our work is ARM Linux, yes. That's where everything's happening, right? Well, I mean, I wouldn't discount the fact that Intel is still a very big driving force of the computing industry. They are doing a lot of work and they're a very good partner of ours. We're thankful to be able to work with both architectures and work very closely with them. But where's the Intel booth here at ArmTechCon? Uh, I don't Next year? believe they have one. Well, there was a big announcement earlier in the week, I believe on Monday evening or Tuesday evening, where they announced that they were opening their foundries to people that are ARM licensees that wanted to have Intel produce the chip for them. So that is a pretty big deal. And I think Intel is showcasing their talent in the chip manufacturing aspects of it, which at the end of the day, you need those foundries to be a relevant player in that market. They may not be present here, but they're showing their strength in participating in the environment that it way. It would be a pretty different TechCon, if next year there's an Intel booth. Only time.